Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody, to, uh, to be here. Uh, my name is Jeroen Gitt, and I'm from Utrecht, uh, Netherlands. And uh, I'm working as a managing consultant for GRID. Um, and, and my strengths, they lie in actually uh, something very different than I think most of you uh, have strengths at. And that is uh, creating digital tactics, setting up uh, a great user experience concept, making sure that a user has its requirements, a business has its requirements, and that they come together, and mostly into a website that's actually great for that user and great for the business. Um, and I have a passion for decoding complex information and bringing them together in an accessible structure. And that's actually a pretty good fit because um, I'm working with GRID and uh, GRID helps organizations to uh, make use of information effectively. So uh, what we do, we support organizations to use effective information in process, system and human decision making. And we do this in the realms of UX and digital tactics. Who doesn't know what user experience is? User experience is uh, often being used in the, uh, in the digital world, so looking at websites, looking at apps, tools, and um, did you ever get the feeling that Word didn't understand you, the paper club kept popping up, you thought, what's this doing here? That was a bad user experience. And the whole idea of user experience is trying to make an experience that actually uh, understands the user, helps him um, fulfilling his needs. Um, and of course, targeted at the audience the business wants to target at. Uh, some programs you might not understand, but you might not be the target audience. So it's for you not a good user experience, but the business might feel that they uh, reached their goal. So for us, looking at all the target audiences, we, we help often uh, large B2B organizations uh, set up effective si uh, websites, uh, fully aligned with the target audience. Uh, aligned with different silos in that organization. Um, and we want to make sure that a website or any other digital outlet is actually uh, uh, fits in with uh, the processes in that organization. We want to make sure that the content actually is updated and that not someone saying, well, who's owning that? I don't even know I was owning that. Um, and we, uh, we create infographics, we create presentations, we create video concepts. As long as it's a multi-dimensional question and uh, just not a one-off, um, we try to make sure that we're up for it. We want to be, if it's digital, if it's connected to processes, it's connected to content, and it's difficult, then it's something for us. And uh, we make use of mind mapping. Uh, we just are not training mind mapping. We make use of it uh, in our own Work. We actually are uh, writing a book at the moment on uh, uh, effectively creating visual presentations and mind maps are uh, one of the tools within that whole method. And for us this, this is very exciting, but uh, as I think most of you will actually do is that if you structure a, a story or a presentation, a mind map is a really good tool for that. Um, so even though it's exciting for us, it might not be that exciting for you. Um, Mind maps are a key tool to structure uh, complex content. And uh, as Liam said, the right tool for the right job. Um, and what I want to talk to you about today is something different. And that's um, actually how to use mind maps to support collaboration. Um, and we often do this uh, within large internet projects. Um, and you get a lot of input. Um, you have lots of stakeholders, lots of input coming in. And we work with these big companies with big ambitions and they often they bite off a bit more than they can actually chew. And to prevent this, uh, we use a program model and that's by Twijnska and Gudde. And we use a program model for projects. So uh, a normal project would be running from A to B. Of course you see A and B as well. And the whole thing about a successful project is making sure a viable project is delivered within due time. Delivering on time in our business makes sure that actually the foundation that the project was started with is not outdated before you actually go live. Um, since these organizations, they bite off a bit more than they can chew, then the B is something really big. And they tend to take a long time to actually get there. 
And before they even get there, well, they have already gone along, along, along a whole windy road and gone back and forth and in the end you never get where you intended to go to. Um, so that's why we use this model. You have your ambition, that's your B, but you have your first goal as well. And that's your first project. You go to A accent. And there's one downside of this, and that's by scoping down too much, um, people start feeling that ambition is something of a, a thing you should not have, because uh, it's not possible to actually uh, to get there, to realize that. And that's something we, we want to uh, make sure that doesn't happen. So ambition should never be tamed. Ambition is something very good, and all valuable input should actually be safe and tracked and make sure that we can make use of it. And that's why a request for input, you know, including all highly ambitious ideas, is always needed in these type of uh, projects to actually make sure that uh, we end up with a great product. However, with stakeholders ranging from 20 to 200, and input consisting <coughs> of all these vague ideas, uh, very high level insights, very concrete wishes, I want my phone number on that page or we should better be in touch with our main target audience. So trying to discuss them and make them tangible and facilitate decision is it's extremely hard actually. And what's often done in this common practice is uh, to create an overview of all the input and uh, spreadsheets um, are used for that, but they do have a clear downside. And that's that you're facilitating table methods so this would be this is an actual spreadsheet of the project, and uh, well, as you can see, it goes down quite a long bit to the end. Uh, there's actually, I think there's around 200 lines in here. It's pretty, pretty small. Um, and it, still, the audience loses context. Put this on the screen, we're in the room, when you want to facilitate decision. Want to make sure you go for what you want to do right now instead of what you go for in the future you lose it. It's becoming a very tedious practice, just doesn't work. And uh, since we ran into this quite often, we, uh, we came up with a new method uh, to handle input in an actual visual way, using mind maps. And, um, well, mind maps have the ability to harbor a huge amount of data while still providing this overview. And um, you can add input, including prioritization, logging, contextual content, um, seems a perfect fit and it makes it really easy to bring discussion to the right level uh, you can see gaps in your story um, you can help facilitate the actual translation to what needs to be implemented in the first phase and what's still to be the ambition for the phases coming after that and I provided an example for it and um, we, we applied this as I said um, this method we often work in large projects and um, huge numbers of stakeholders and uh, the example I will be showing uh, in a minute is uh, of a digital transformation program of a, a multinational in the B2B market and uh, the first focus of this program was to redesign their website so that was in the whole program the website was only the first bit and we're talking about 60,000 products here uh, 20 applications multiple different solutions big stuff um, and to gain all these requirements, um, we utilize customer surveys. We're talking about 8,000 people responding to that survey. Uh, internal surveys in the hundreds. Uh, executive interviews, like an hour and a half sitting down with someone who really has ambition for the company. Uh, lots of workshops, desk to research, files on my desk really high. And um, a total of 180 stakeholders uh, were identified to provide input in this map. And that's excluding the people uh, in the survey because they were anonymous. Um, and the mind map I'm showing is that they have over 1,800 requirements in it. So, sorry for that. How did you even get it in? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. Talk about yourself. <laughs> I'll just take a sip of water. I'm sorry for the whole being a slowness. Yeah. So. That's David. 
This is what we're looking at. Oh, that's a top? Yeah. 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 And there we are. Big mind maps. But when in the meeting, we start with this. Six groups. Six groups in which we group together. Uh, you see that there's leads. Um, we made this an anonymous map. So the family Smith uh, is very good in providing input. So of course, we changed some names to make sure that uh, our clients don't feel that we are taking their, uh, their good ideas away. And um, if we would, for instance, have a meeting on user experience, um, we would just uncollapse this one. So over here, we're looking at not too much, 23, 23 high-level IDs that uh, can be discussed. So in, if we would do uh, an interview with uh, more or less director level within these organizations, we would keep it at this level. We just gain what they actually have to say about it, get a good feeling of what they want to go for, don't drill down further. That makes it really handy to work with because in the Excel they would see they have all the bits that are below that. In the mind map we can just decide what we want to show. And if I would be sitting with someone who actually, um, for instance, uh, with regards to the power of storytelling, well, if someone would be engaged with that, uh, in charge of that, or how you would say it, then we only have five different requirements at the lowest level. You see a bit of visual metadata here. Um, there's a, a legend, ready for sign-off, revision, priority, and over here you see how we prioritize this. For uh, the purchase experience, there are a bit more. So, 15. And over here you see as well that um, this one is a bit vague. One-click ordering uh, might mean different types of things. Uh, as a low priority and as a link with the bi-direct buttons coming from the internal survey, being an attention point. And um, we would be able to look at, for this one, at what would be the notes, a bit more explanation on how it actually worked. Uh, somebody gave input and often gives input uh, pretty, pretty big. They, they share a lot of information and we try to bring it down to these, these bits we can actually work with. And to make sure that we don't lose context, to make sure that we still can relate back to uh, the choice we made when summarizing it, we always include the attachment. So over here, the website should have bad by direct buttons from the internal survey. This is the actual uh, uh, survey file and shows 17 pages, I believe, of uh, all the different stuff coming out of that survey. Of course, before you find that one requirement back, you're looking for it, but you at least have the source at hand. So we're going to wait again. You, you talk about um, the legend that you yeah. have. How important have you found that when you're managing maps? Because I think it's what's missing in a lot of maps is when people don't show what codes yeah. they're using. How, is, how does that help? Yeah, yeah what worked best, uh, of course, we had quite a different set of stakeholders working, working with it. So uh, these business stakeholders at a higher level in the organization, we didn't give the map to them. They could only see it on screen. We were managing it, don't touch it. Um, with the people that are actually uh, working with the context matter at hand, uh, they would actually be prioritizing, uh, uh, refining, uh, taking all these, uh, these extras in there. And um, in that case, the legend made sure that we spoke one common language. So the legend was key and also something that we actually brought forward, uh, saying, okay, you can work in this map, this is the legend, those are the rules. Don't don't start putting in smiley faces and whatsoever, because we have one common language, and that's the legend. So this this method, what was actually Excel at for us? Um, so we applied this in, in, in quite a number of projects by now, um, big projects, smaller projects, and what we really see is that uh, the sharing for further handling uh, also related to to what we're talking about right now. Um, 
it works really good. You can actually extract one branch, uh, hand it over, have someone really working with it, do workshops, getting them really ready to be signed off and bring them back into the map, fully prioritized, signed off uh, in the works. Um, the granularity, uh, business stakeholders, they um, really like the high level, don't get overwhelmed. Um, but the ones that are concerned with the, the actual details, they, uh, they like the lowest level, fully utilizing all the notes and attachments and really drilling down to make sure that they, they were on the right track. And actually for implementation engineers, we just export it to Excel. They want to work with Excel, that's part of their job, uh, or they want to work with some agile tool, we just make sure that the things that are in the map can be exported and imported to the tool they need, uh, right tool for the right job, we're not forcing any mind maps upon an implementation engineer, they have their own processes to work with. And the communication tool to actually engage, make it a co collaboration tool instead of only uh, an information structuring tool, that's more or less the, the most important bit on, on this method. Um, there are specific demands uh, on, on, on what the project should go for, and um, this map can actually provide the context we, we need them to have. So uh, the demo uh, of the project I just showed, it's now going towards a minimal viable product, Go Live, which means A accent, as shown in the model. And um, that, that will be in December. And at the moment, we are looking at what's the next step. And the key source for that mind map, uh, the key source for that step is the mind map. So the roadmap that's being created is, uh, the mind map is a source for it, but the mind map will be utilized again uh, in the next phase as new requirements will be coming in. The world has changed a bit and uh, it will stay a living document. It's not something that's safe somewhere and we, uh, we just leave it be. It will grow and will be reprioritized. Something would be in, that would have been important three months ago might not be important or even we don't even want it right now because the world has changed. Um, I want to conclude with um, that collaboration on stakeholder input uh, is essential and um, we actually feel that this method uh, should be used to, uh, to make use of this information effectively. Thank you.